Good morning. Hi, it's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for trading session the uh, Wednesday, 11th of April 2018. Please be, visit, be, please be sure to visit say, Trade Signal signals and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. Download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, so uh, in terms of Asian markets overnight, a mixed uh, sort of result. Uh, Chinese markets are certainly um, higher, but certainly uh, off the highs. And uh, Japanese markets certainly lower as well. US equities certainly selling off from that uh, impressive rally yesterday uh, on the back of obviously easing uh, tensions from the Chinese side. Although you can read that in multiple ways. Again, it's open to multiple interpretations. So whichever way your bias would be, you could certainly justify it from that perspective. So certainly is problematic to a, to a, to a large extent. So again, exercise some sort of caution there from my perspective anyway. Certainly will be. Okay, so um, again, um, it's uh, one could read it both ways in terms of China's uh, Mr. President Xi's speech, and uh, that certainly did obviously trigger a potential short covering rally as well. And also, Mr. Navarro as well stating that there's a potential room for a, a potential, uh, obviously, uh, agreement there, or the door certainly is open for agreement. Now, in terms of uh, European markets this morning, then certainly gapping higher uh, to a large extent, FTSE certainly as well. Uh, gapping higher, although uh, economic data overnight from Japan certainly coming in slightly stronger than expected in terms of machinery orders, and uh, the Chinese inflation numbers certainly coming in weaker than expected. So, again, you could argue that both ways. On the one hand, you could say that China will have a lax monetary policy, i.e., um, a dovish policy going forward, and therefore, obviously, um, uh, any potential tightening is is delayed, which in turn is obviously bullish. Or one could argue that weaker inflation generally means weaker growth. Okay weak demand and therefore obviously doesn't bode well for commodities and, and global equity. So again, open to multiple interpretation. Uh, in terms of economic data this morning, UK trade data is certainly coming in on the weaker side, industrial production, manufacturing as well, certainly on the weaker side. The only good news obviously is the fact that uh, the trade balance certainly improved, but if manufacturing and industrial production certainly coming in weaker, that's not that's no solace from that perspective, from my understanding. Anyway, any bullish argument there certainly is negated by those two points of weaker data. So you are looking at risk off for the FTSE. Now, the FTSE 100 has been helped by oil. Uh, prices certainly moving higher. Now, oil prices are moving higher due to tensions in the Middle East, given the fact that Syria was put on notice. Now, the uh, somebody has attacked Syria two or three days ago. Nobody certainly owned up to it, whether it's Israel or it's America. We just don't know as of yet. So, again, uh, the Russians have given a warning to the Americans. If you were to attack, then there will be grave repercussions. So, again, the situation certainly is a uh, uh, risk off from that perspective. Also, with regards to the Russian uh, economy as well, and the Russian currency certainly sliding quite sharply this week on the back of uh, American sanctions. Again, uh, geopolitical tensions certainly are in the background. Therefore, you're looking at risk off. And hence the reason why you've seen a rally in the, uh, in the price of oil, okay? So a rally in the price of oil doesn't actually mean it's bullish for commodities because that is not demand-led, okay? That's fear-led. Anything that's fear-led is generally indicating risk-off, my understanding and my interpretation of, of fundamentals. Again, everybody's welcome to their own interpretation. So again, that's actually generally risk-off, okay? So that certainly is a status quo. So weaker UK data, weaker uh, Chinese inflation, which obviously equals weaker demand, etc and obviously the trade war concerns are there geopolitical tensions are there regarding syria and obviously the russian situation as well so there certainly seems to be a lot of arguments there from my perspective that the market certainly is going to move lower now that we've got mr draghi at 12 o'clock so all eyes on mr draghi let's see what this uh, character has to say and the markets obviously will react accordingly uh, in terms of uh, the cpi data from the us as well so euro usd certainly is going to get very volatile in the next two three hours so so certainly buckle up from that perspective Okay, um, watch out for volatility there, which in turn obviously is going to cause hawkish, dovish potential uh, sentiments, which in turn obviously will affect equities as well. In terms of the technical picture, let's have a look here. German DAX, ever since it closed that gap here, it certainly is uh, trading weaker as well. You, you've certainly seem to have built a base around 11.770. Now let's see what happens from there. In terms of uh, Mr. Nowotny yesterday was hawkish, Euro obviously approaching 1.24 certainly doesn't bode well for uh, German exports, so bear that in mind, okay? Also, you've got the strikes ongoing in Germany, which again is risk negative, okay? Bear that in mind as well. Yesterday's uh, German data, the day before, the German data certainly came in weaker as well. The French data came in weaker as well. And the euro moving higher, that doesn't bode well. So looking for risk off, looking for gap fill below at 12,260 on the German DAX. Again, Draghi will have quite an input there. 
So just bear that in mind as well. Draghi will dictate potential price action as well. You are coming into support now in this region. Let's see how the market reacts accordingly, okay? So watch out there. Okay, uh, now let's move on. Okay, so again, looking at support in this zone. Okay, so German DAX. So yes, uh, German DAX on the 10-minute chart. Let's just uh, quickly go back to the daily, given the fact that I just paused the video. I was looking at the markets. Uh, the markets certainly have started to move lower on the back of uh, news regarding the United Nations General Assembly. Uh, basically, the Americans are going it alone, uh, going in to kill more innocent, looks like innocent uh, women and children in Syria, uh, as if it hasn't been bombed enough, as if Iraq, Afghanistan isn't enough. These warmongering Americans certainly want to go back into uh, Syria now and bomb the hell out of that as well. Um, so it's not looking good, folks. It's not looking good. Again, uh, Merkel certainly coming out with some comments there regarding the uh, situation. Um, given the fact that she said Germany's Merkel says regret there was no UN Security Council agreement on Syria don't want to speculate what may happen next so again scenario certainly isn't looking good uh, and the Russians have already said if the Americans were to shoot or throw anything there in that region again it's not looking good they're going to retaliate and there will be repercussions given the fact that the Americans have already put a potential uh, uh, sanctions on the Russian on a lot of Russian companies in the Russian stock market and uh, the uh, currency certainly has been sliding for the last week so it certainly seems like uh, the situation is looking dire and it's looking even worse. Okay, so again, looking for gap fill in the German DAX by the look of things. Uh, again, Mr. Draghi is speaking in the next half an hour. So again, expect a lot of volatility there as well. Okay, folks, so 10-minute chart certainly has flushed. I was expecting that, that support to hold. That's one of the reasons why I closed my short. Okay, um, so again, looking interesting. Okay, so looking interesting. Let's have a look. Into the 200 MA now. Any potential retracement, I'll be looking to short. So bear that in mind. Geopolitical uncertainty, uh, adding the fact that you've got uh, a situation uh, regarding UK data as well. UK data is certainly coming out. Um, into, oh, again, I'm going to wait for Draghi now, wait till 12 o'clock, really, to make any ne my next move uh, in, on the market. So again, if Draghi certainly sounds hawkish, this market is sliding quite sharply, going back down to the gap fill. So watch out below. Okay. Moving on then, in terms of the French CAC. Again, daily chart uh, failing at this uh, cap fill or potential horizontal resistance. Uh, certainly looking to move, move lower now. 60-minute uh, chart certainly looks exhausted as well. So again, looking to cap fill below. Okay, so look for a potential slide. 10-minute uh, chart. Let's just bring up the chart for you. 10-minute chart. Again, any retracement now certainly is looking to be sold. Okay, so watch out for weakness there as well. Okay, so any weakness certainly looking to be sold. Okie dokie. So, yeah, certainly looking for weakness here. Watch out for weakness below, folks. That's basically my own interpretation. Uh, again, 7 minute chart looking at gap fill. Okay, um, below. That's ideal target below gap fill. Uh, you've got gap fill above as well. So, if the market does actually move higher, watch out there as well. Um, a mini little mini HNS formation, one could argue, is certainly already formed. Left shoulder here, head, and we've had the right shoulder now. So, again, any retracement looking to potentially throw slower. So, looking to gap fill. So, looking for 5260 on the downside. That's basically the aim I would be making as well on any potential retrace here on the European markets. So, looking for weakness. Okay, moving on. Okay, looking at the FTSE 100 now. Again, FTSE has made a double top intraday. So, again, any potential retracement here. Again, is a bearish factor for me. Okay, um, I did try an intraday short. I put my stop loss too tight or stopped out there at gap fill. So again, from my perspective now, looking for double top, looking for a lower high. Any retracement now to 7250, 7255, 60, etc. I'll be looking to short, looking to potentially target that gap at 7200. So again, looking at risk off. Okay, so certainly looking for the market to slide. I'm looking for this market to fall. Okay, I think that's a good uh, summation, really, of uh, of the uh, UK or European markets. Now, uh, on that note, please be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading needs and certainly take advantage of the bonus. And be sure to uh, certainly take advantage of that bonus. Take care now. Goodbye.